Greetings, QCS Build fans. And yes, I'm wearing the wrong shirt for this video. <laughs> it's been a really long day. I just got back from Utah about an hour ago. Uh, had to finish up some stuff and trying to get everything set up for this video. And I just don't have time to go change. So anyways, what are we doing? That's probably a better question. Well, we got some network gear. We've got a rack server chassis. We got a desktop, and we got a mini PC. What could it possibly be? Ah, so we're doing a, a small medical office on a budget. <laughs> so normally <clears throat> we would go a little more crazy with everything. Um, primarily, uh, instead of using an edge router, we would be using uh, full-on Unify equipment. Uh, unfortunately, that's not available for another two months at the time of filming right now. So we'd have to wait until after the first of the year. So that's not going to happen. Um, so in the server, um, normally we would do some bigger drives, we'd do bigger processors, stuff like that. And again, those are not available <laughs> right now. So yeah, so, again, we're trying to do everything as much on a budget with what's available right now as humanly possible. Also, uh, this is for some new clients that I acquired uh, earlier this year, and they've been great, but then they also, kind of unforeseen, ended up uh, purchasing a second uh, practice. So, yeah, this was kind of a wasn't really planned kind of a thing and kind of got dropped into my lap about two weeks ago and they said uh oh yeah so you know uh we're gonna do another office here in elko in uh elko nevada and uh yeah <laughs> we're gonna need a we're, we're getting some network hardware and some other stuff and i'm like okay and uh, budget's kind of a thing because we're getting tired of spending money <laughs> And so I was like, I can work with that. That's not a problem. So fortunately, it's a smaller area. We don't need a whole lot of network gear. Um, it's only going to have uh, five computers plus a server in there at, the, uh, at this time. So it's not going to be a super big deal. Um, it's actually going to work out just fine. So kind of the rundown. So we've got the network hardware. So we got our... Um, Unify AC Pro um, dual band access point. We're going to have two of those. Uh, we've got our Edge Router 12 by Ubiquity. Um, this is kind of a nice little all-in-one unit because it lets us have a router, a firewall, and a 12-port switch all at the same time. Um, so that way it's all-in-one and it keeps the everything kind of minimalistic to a certain extent. Um, we're going to have two of our basic uh, QCS uh, Azeroth desktops, um, which you can go back and look at the video for that. The only thing that we've done differently is, if I move this guy around, you can see we've got wireless antennas on the back. We've added wireless for this because the other thing is instead of running cable everywhere, because this current office has no network lines run in it at all whatsoever. So one of the cost savings is instead of spending basically an entire day going through and running cable with probably a two-man crew, uh, we're just going to do the whole office on wireless and the two access points will work perfectly fine and we won't have any issues. So Because again, we're only running five computers plus the server. So for now. Uh, Eventually, we'll probably expand to another uh, about three, three or four more computers later on down the road um, as they kind of pick up steam. But for right now, we're just going with the five. So we're going to have two of these. These are going to be for our front desk. And then for our exam uh, stations, we're going to have the 4300 mini PCs, um, the ASRock industrial 4x4 box in the 4300U. 
So, uh, and you can go back and you can actually watch the video from that because we did one for that last year um, because that's the same unit my wife runs in the house um, that replaced her laptop. So, okay. Well, this video specifically is about this guy. It's about the server. So the server is going to be, it's a uh, Windows uh, 2019 standard edition server. Um, we're going to run uh, Hyper-V on it, and we're going to run uh, two, server in, two added server instances on it, because uh, we need one for the domain controller for security, and then we need another one for the medical database application. And um, from other issues that I've had in the past, um, it's a lot easier to take instead of running your database application and your domain controller in the same virtual machine or on the same server, that it is it works a lot better if you take those two and you separate them so they are not in the same server instance. And so then that way if the database application people have to log in, change stuff, add user accounts, do whatever. They don't have to do it on the on the domain controller side and mess with the the rest of the site. They can just do it in their own little box in their own little world, and nobody is the wiser, and just keep that database and application software running perfectly fine without it without a hiccup. And it works great like that when you have the biggest issue you run into that and if you need to re if you got to update the application and say it needs a, a server update or it has to reboot or anything like that you're not rebooting the entire hardware you're just rebooting the vm and that particular server instance that you need to reboot so yeah it works so much better to do it that way so okay well that's basically it for all the stuff so for here we're going to get rid of this guy and this guy and these guys and we're for this particular video we're just going to talk about the server so and voila it's gone all right so we need some hardware All right, we got some hardware. All right, so you're gonna see we got some of the usual suspects. If you've gone back and you've looked at our previous Epic builds, um, so most importantly, we have our Epic um, 7251 chip. Now that's an eight-core Naples chip. Now, why are you saying, "Well, Milan Zen 3 is out. Why are you using a, a Naples chip?" Uh, because it's available. <laughs> Rome and um, Milan are almost impossible to get a hold of right now. Um, unless you want like 48 cores, 32 cores, uh, 64 core processors, um, or you want like super high speed uh, 8 and 16 core processors that you pay more money for. Um, which we don't need for this. So, yeah, so those will work perfectly fine. Uh, later on down the road, if we have to, we can always take and we can upgrade this to a ROM chip later on because this board will let us do it. Worst case scenario is we upgrade the board and the chip and we keep the same memory and everything else. Um, and on this chassis, that's actually fairly easy to do because it's literally like pull one out and put the new one in and you're done. So, anyways, so the other usual suspect is our ASRock rack, Epic D8-2T motherboard. Um, so, if you go back and you've seen any of our other videos, uh, we've used this board religiously. Um, the main reason we use this board is because it's less expensive than the Rome platform. Um, 
I had the thought of going to like a, uh, they make a Roam Mini ITX um, platform board and actually just doing a small mini uh, ITX server. There was a problem with that. Uh, that board is about $200 more than this board wholesale. <laughs> so didn't make a lot of sense when we're trying to save money. So anyways, but if you go back and you look at our uh, Epic Naples uh, server video, um, you're going to see a lot of the same hardware. Um, the only difference is we kind of cut some things down here and there and the price has come down on a lot of stuff and so with the nice thing about that is this machine actually ended up being about $500 cheaper than that one. So um, that's a good thing. So uh, let's see. So then we've got our Nemix uh, DDR4 3200 ECC registered memory. The difference with this is this is three, this is four sticks of eight gig, so it gives us quad channel capability of 32 gigs in memory. So, which you're, th you know, you're probably thinking, oh my God, you're running an application medical database server. You know, you're not gonna have nearly enough memory. No, 32 gigs is gonna be plenty for this thing because the database application doesn't it is not being accessed all the time by every single computer it's only being queried as needed so it's not like you have to keep that entire database in memory all the time so we got that uh let's see the other thing we got is we've got our samsung ssd 980 drives we're using one terabyte drives in this particular unit um because we do need all that extra room for OS storage and virtual machine storage. So yeah, we do need, we do need that. Uh, our primary drive set is going to be the Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM 2 terabyte drives. We're going to have three of those in a RAID 5 array, so it gives us an effective uh, storage of four terabytes, which will be plenty, but at the same time, totally up upgradable and expandable later on down the road. The other drive down there is an Seagate Exos 8 terabyte drive that's 7200 RPM. That drive is our back is our internal backup drive. So that way we will have double redundancy for all of our data internally on the machine. So then that way um, we don't have to worry about file corruption or anything else like that. Um, we can always just restore it from backup and do it almost instantly because it's going to be local and it's going to be inside the machine. We don't have to worry about cloud backup or anything like that. The other issue is, is well, this is northern Nevada. We uh, Cloud backup is not really an option for large data sets because there's not enough internet bandwidth in the area to be able to get um, large data sets uploaded in a timely manner. So, so that's it for the drives. Um, you're going to see we've also gone with our Noctua uh, NHU 9 TR4 SP3 cooler again, uh, because again, old reliable wins the race every single time. Uh, we don't need anything fancy and we've also got to be able to fit it inside the box. So most of your tower coolers and stuff like that will not fit inside this because of clearance. So, and then we've got an 850 watt Antec Neo Eco uh, power supply that is 80 plus platinum rated. So the idea, the, the beauty behind this is this will keep the noise down. Also, it will keep the heat down because we're not going to be producing a whole lot of heat inside this box. So. All right, and oh, one last thing. We have our backplane. So if you've gone back and looked at any of our server builds, you know that I always use StarTech backplanes, hot swap, uh, that are trailers. And the reason being because it just makes your life so much easier um, than having to open, up, open it up, pull the drive out. In this particular machine, you'd have to move the fan, uh, 
the secondary fan tray around. This one's also going to be vertically wall mounted, so you don't have to worry about the drives falling out of their carriers or anything like that and then impacting against the back of the machine or damaging the drive or anything like that. It's all kept inside this guy. Now, the one thing you'll, that we'll notice when we get to it is this is not the same back plane, uh, four drive back plane that we normally use. That four drive back plane runs retail at about 120 bucks. This four drive black plane by StarTech runs around 90 bucks. So again, saving money. The biggest difference between the two is this uses two 40 or 30 millimeter fans in the back um, for cooling. The standard one that we normally use uses a single 80 or 93 millimeter fan in the back. So you get more airflow. The other one is more ideal if you were going to take and you were going to fill this thing with drives in the front like we did with the Threadripper server project. Um, and you can go back and look at that one. It's more ideal because in that particular instance you need the airflow. In this particular instance, airflow is not so as important because we're still going to have 220 millimeter fans up front. We're going to have the, uh, the mid plate in the, inside the machine that's going to give us 360 millimeters of a fan. Um, and then we're going to have our two 80 millimeter fans in the back. So, yeah. So we're going to have plenty of airflow. That in this particular chip only runs at about 120, 130 watts. So it's not like it generates a, a massive amount of heat. Neither do the drives or the SSDs. So we don't need a massive amount of airflow, but at the same time, we do need airflow. So this will work perfectly fine um, as it is. So just like our uh, Naples backup server did. That's almost identically the same setup. So, all right, well that's it. Let's get to the bench. All right, let's rock and roll here. All right, so I'm gonna try it. I've already taken the screws out, so I'm gonna go ahead and Oh, nope, I guess I missed one. All right, so this unit is going to go on the wall in the office area. So because of that, we're going to test it for sound. And if the fans are too loud, then we're going to change the fans out with Arctic fans. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll find out about that later. So we're going to take our cross brace out here. Also known in our case as our cable management bar. So our box of goodies. For which we only need, let's see, like that and that. We only need the screws, and we only need that bag of screws. These are the slide rails for the drive cages for up front. Um, I never use these, but of course, these cases I usually end up wall mounting vertically, so. Um, I have a hard time wanting to trust uh, these and have them go slamming into the fans, or if you take this out, slamming into the board. Either way, it's a really bad situation. So I always use the back planes, especially in a, uh, a business or a commercial deployment. Um, yeah. Okay, so we got these guys. These are extras, which we might need. Not sure. We'll find out. Okay. So otherwise, these can basically all go, except for that bag, and go up here with the others that I have. All right. Get our IO shield put in here. Oh. 
Okay, so there's our board. And it comes with two M.2 screws, which we'll need later. So we'll set those over here. Comes with one uh, HD SAS connector to uh, uh, SATA uh, cable. Uh, so this one has, you can see here, it's got the power connector on it. So this is ideal for this type of situation, where if you were going to use these drive cages, then this would plug into your drive, and then you would take your power connector and then plug it right in here. And then you would constantly be pulling this out from the back. Where we're going to use back planes, the black plane already has the connector on it, and all we need is the SATA part, the data cable part of it because the data cables and the power connectors are not side by side like this on a back plane. So that's why we end up always using, here it is. That's why we always end up using one of these. Now this is a cable, cable matters. Uh, CTG also makes one, uh, Rosewell makes one, a lot of different companies make these, but Of course, you know, like anything else in the computer world, it's probably all made by the same factory. It's just different names on the, on the packaging. But we always end up using one of these because all we need is this and that. So, and then of course they're labeled one, two, three, and four. So, I do. Okay, so we'll set that there. And then the SATA, this standalone SATA kill, which is for the DOM connector right here, uh, we will actually be needing. So set that over there. And I'll go ahead and get this out of the bag here. All right, so this guy doesn't use the standoff here. What he uses these three and these three. And this is a standard size ATX motherboard. It's not extended ATX like a lot of server boards would be. So, um, or not extended ATX, but uh, uh, EEB or EEB2 uh, form factor. So, all right, so we gotta take that one out and then that one's the offset there. And then those three are straight across. All right, so get these standoffs moved around here. Check, yep, all right, we're good. Uh, all right, cool. Put some screws in here. Okay. Hide for a chip. All right, make sure. Two and two, one and one. So, okay, good. There's its tray. Gotta make sure it's in the carrier on the right orientation. Otherwise, we will, uh, it won't want, it won't turn on. <laughs> so, okay. Alright, so take this guy. Now, I always kind of like to pull this out and then lay this down partially and slide it in like this because I don't like dangling the chip over the top of the socket in the off chance that I pull a, a deer bower and. Uh, the chip either comes out of the carrier or I drop it. Um, he had, I believe it was a W3175 that he dropped in. Well, he didn't drop it. It actually, the chip actually came out of the carrier and fell into the socket and damaged the socket to the point where he couldn't uh, fix it, which was really bad because that was like a $3,000 motherboard. <laughs> Because W31 is bloody expensive. Also, in a lot of a lot of cases, it's the most ridiculous and stupid stupidest platform that's ever been developed by anyone. All right, there's our RAM. Now they give you a quick in the newer packaging. They give you a quick install guide. Unfortunately, the quick install guide does not have the memory population guide in it. So that doesn't do any good. So it means I still 
have to use the QR code and go to the website. Okay. So it's the port inside slots. I always just know I have to do it before I put the heat sink on. Probably should get our power supply in here. All right, one Neo out platinum, 850. Okay, one power supply. Time for a heat sink. Alright, so we're gonna set that there for a second. Cool. Alright. Now everybody has their own technique for doing this. I have my own as well, so I just like to go. One, two, three. Guaranteed to give you full coverage through the entire die. And when it squeezes out, it actually spreads all the way across, so. Yeah, this pattern works perfectly for me every single time. Zero issues. All right, let me get the dust off of this. There's no dust. I think there's no anything on that. Okay. Good deal. Alright. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I'm gonna do this. Can we do it that way? Oh yeah, we can do it that way. Sweet. I'll just do it that way. Cool. Alright. So orientation is always wide on one side, narrow on the other. So you got wide and narrow. Okay, that's our cooler. All right, so there's gonna be one. Okay. It comes right out. There we go. And yes, they kind of stick a little bit. So I like this back plane. I've used it before. The only issue I have with it is it's got these itty bitty little tiny fans in the back that are almost pointless. <laughs> yep. They allow for a little bit of airflow, just enough to keep your drives from getting super hot. I guess if you had like 10,000 RPM drives or 15,000 RPM drives, I guess it would be an issue, but you know, whatever. Okay. Okay, there we go. And click, and we're in. All right, sweet. All right, get our fans wired and our other fans back in. All right, let's fire it up. Hey, we got power, that's a good sign.
Uh, let's see, we're on 90 second hold for our uh, BMC to come up. That's what this countdown means. Oh, you can't quite see it. So there's a countdown happening down here. That is your 90 second um, delay for your BCM or BMC controller to come up, which is your interface management controller. There we go. But it does look like, it looks like I got the LEDs backwards here. So flip those around real quick. Oh, yep, I did, because I kind of hooked them up backwards. Okay. Oh, that's fine. There we go. Now my LEDs are working. And we're at 99. All right, and you can see we got her all mounted up here with our uh, wire mold, uh, keeping our cables all nice and neat and out of the way. So, um, yeah, so this took about, um, with everything, took a couple of days to actually get everything installed and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, so you can see the server here just uh, hanging up there on the wall nice and running It's actually between two cabinets. You can kind of see the one on the left and you can see the one on the right The one on the right is the network cabinet you can see here and um, It's as kind of as neat as possible with the limited amount of space that we got in there so But uh, yeah works out pretty well um, got our little battery backup in here, so that way uh, everything doesn't reboot when we have a power blip or something like that, because that tends to happen fairly often around here. Um, let's see, and then we got our, uh, our mini box, um, that is running our exam stations, so that's nice and mounted up to our verse amount on the inside of the cabinet there <clears throat> and then you can see the the monitor here this monitor is actually if you look closely it's upside down um and actually that worked out really well with these asus monitors because um the mount the verse mount is actually down towards the bottom of the monitor and not it directly smack in the middle of it so for this installation it actually worked out perfectly because if we could flip the monitor over, and yeah, it still gave us room to be able to move the monitor around without having to um, have it lip over the front cabinet there on top or anything like that. So, and then you can see the front desk, and uh, you can see the two computers are actually sitting there underneath. Uh, one eventually ended up moving d further down the desk uh, for everything, but yeah. Anyways, all right. Well, that's it. Nothing too horribly exciting. Um, once we got everything, the software all loaded, the database is installed, and everything all set up, uh, site has been running really, really well. The only kicker we got is they're still on DSL, and it's super slow um, as far as the internet goes. It's not so much the download, it's the upload. Um, they could only get about two megs up consistently, so and it's just because the copper lines are the, in the ground in that part of town are just really old and deteriorated. And so uh, we have to wait like six months before they've put fiber in. So anyways, all right. Well, like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you like this content, let us know, uh, give us a like. If you didn't, tell us why and give us a dislike. Um, so we, we can improve the channel. Thanks for watching. Uh, sorry for the delay in this one. 
Um, we've been between this project and the next projects that you'll see coming up uh, in future videos and everything, it's been a really, really busy holiday season. And so, uh, yeah, it's just been absolutely insane. Um, so, which has left me working seven days a week and not a lot of time to install, or not install, to edit videos. Uh, I got tons of videos sitting on the server that need to be uh, edited and produced, but uh, I just haven't had time to actually sit down and get to it. So, um, hopefully, uh, between now and uh, the end of January, we'll get all those up and go in and uh, you'll have lots of more content. So, all right. Well, again, thank you for watching and bye for now.